look, we may be healthy, strong, active professionals and parents now, but as we start nearing retirement, we have to ask ourselves, are we just gonna throw it all away? Of course not. We're never gonna throw it all away. And how we maintain that is what we're gonna talk about today. How's it going guys? Troy here from Fit Track Coaching where we help busy parents and professionals over the age of 40 live stronger, longer, and healthier lives simply with the power of habits. Now, of course, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell so you can stay up to date with all of our videos as we roll them out. And today, we look a little bit more into the future. We look more closer to, hey, what's life? And what's our bodies gonna be like as we near and hit retirement? And, and let's be honest, we don't know when retirement is. Each every person is different, each individual is different. Some people never retire. They stay in their field and stay in their career uh, way beyond the retirement age of 65. But body-wise, mind-wise, spirit-wise, what are some of the things we could do to maintain strength and maintain healthiness going close to retirement and hitting that age and beyond? It's pretty simple. And when we start with this one thing, it will then help everything else. And the one thing I'm gonna start with is muscle. It's not scientifically verified, but many medical experts say the muscular system is like a secondary endocrine system. In lamest terms, muscular system helps you move. Endocrine system helps balance the hormones that go through your body. Now, calling the muscular system a secondary endocrine system is implying that the stronger you stay and the more strength and muscle you maintain, the more balanced the other hormones have a chance to be. Now, this can't be verified. This isn't 100%, but that is a theory. And I can bet that if we keep you strong and we keep you mobile, that the rest of the health things will have a better chance of managing themselves. So that's where we're gonna start maintaining strength because even as we crack 40 the muscular system goes into use it or lose it territory so people think oh my god i as i get older i'm just getting weaker i'm just losing my strength no you're not losing your strength unless you just stop using it so once again we want to keep the body moving and keep the body lifting keep up some sort of endurance-based, stability-based, and uh, muscular-based strength training. Now, without overcomplicating the system, you could always just hit up our classes and hit up our sessions to get guidance, but without overcomplicating things, I could recommend you to maintain some sort of strength in some prime compound ranges of motion. What do I mean? Certain things a body does in real life, you know, pushing with the upper body, pulling with the upper body, Squatting, meaning you have to hinge at the hips and hinge at the knees in a balanced motion, being able to, that way you're able to get up from the ground or get lower to the ground without feeling like something's gonna get injured. All the while maintaining a base of core strength and stability. We're not talking crunches here, but we're talking the ability to connect your upper body to the lower body to the ground in some way, shape, or form without feeling like you're gonna collapse. These are prime ranges of motion. These are compound muscular ranges of motion that if you're able to maintain, and able to keep strong with various exercises, you will have muscular maintenance. You will keep your strength as you age. You may even get stronger as you age. Now, I'm not gonna say you're gonna get maximum lifts and maximum strength as we age, unless you really wanna go into some uh, power lifting, but you don't even have to do that. We're talking about relative strength. Strength per body weight. Strength relative to body weight. So if you're able to maintain that, you're gonna be golden. Now, on the other side of the coin is nutritional end. To maintain the strength and to maintain our secondary endocrine system, to maintain our muscular system, we want to maintain protein intake. Now, Everybody's protein preferences are gonna be a little bit different. Some people are more uh, accustomed to absorbing the benefits of red meat. Some people can't really eat red meat, they need more poultry. Some people are very Mediterranean and they like uh, poultry with a lot of fish. 
Some people have to go up with a plant-based eating habits, a, a vegan or a vegetarian protein diet uh, due to either digestive systems, ethical issues, and stuff like that. But no matter what your preference is, maintain that at least 30% of your daily intake be protein. 30 your plate. You don't have to calculate macros per se, but rule of thumb, 30 your plate, be a protein source. That way you're able to maintain the strength, maintain your muscle, and help balance everything out. Now, it isn't just about lifting. It isn't just about lifting your body weight or lifting weights or doing strength training exercises. On the other side of that coin is gonna be your cardiovascular system. The most important muscle in your body is your heart. And outside of the heart, you have other things coming into play, such as the lungs with their lung capacity and their ability to take in air. The circulatory system, your blood vessels being able to transport oxygenated blood to the muscles in order for them to maintain well. So to help with staying strong, to help with the protein intake, we definitely want to maintain some sort of steady state or fundamental cardio strength. What do I mean by that? So in the world of cardio, there is steady state cardio and then there's high intensity cardio. Some people call it HIT, high intensity interval training. Out of the two, HIT is just a fast, pounding, powerful burst of cardio and then rest. Powerful burst of cardio and then rest. While that's able to help maintain the heart's ability to pump fast and pump powerfully, what we really want to do is maintain the heart's ability to pump blood per heartbeat, as well as to expand the lung capacity of the lungs, as well as to relax the blood vessels so they can flood the muscles with oxygenated blood. Which is why of these two categories, I definitely recommend keeping up your steady state cardio. It's, it could be as simple as 30 minutes a day of just walking. And you don't even have to hit that high of an intensity. If you have some sort of heart rate monitor or wearable device, you're thinking up to 70% of your maximum heart rate. Or if you're t thinking about it and you don't have a monitor, you could basically just do an activity that you could still talk as you do it. So you're doing some sort of activity like treadmill walking. And the great thing is, you know you're doing a steady state cardio is if you're just going steady as she goes, and you're able to talk to your friend and talk to your companion. Steady state cardio has the benefit of being a very social way of exercising. So you can do it with friends and you can enjoy the outdoors and you can do any sort of activity that benefits that. And you're still gonna be maintaining your bone density, increasing your lung capacity, circulating blood, and maintaining that strength of the heart per heartbeat. Not how hard it can be, but how well it can pump blood per one beat. We could go even further and we could go even more details, but these are three great things to consider to maintain that healthiness, that activity going into retirement. Once again, being relatively strong compared to your body weight, maintaining protein levels in your nutrition. That way you're able to maintain muscle. You don't lose it, you keep using it. And all the while helping those muscles stay recovered and maintain overall health, especially your cardiovascular health through steady state cardio. Trust me, if you start with these three, the rest of the process will follow. If you have any other questions or you have any other ideas, do shoot them down in the comments below. If you haven't already, once again, make sure you like this video and subscribe to Fit Track Coaching so you can keep up with all of our videos. This has been Coach Troy, and I'll talk to you later.